Denny Hamlin, three times a Daytona 500 winner. Kyle Busch, 20 years of trying. And tonight they're all looking for one thing, pole position for the Daytona 500. Welcome back to Speed Weeks, presented by Advent Health. Well, the moon is headed toward full later this month. What is full right now is the NASCAR garage area. And they're on the way to qualify in the most unique qualifying session in motorsports. Hi, everybody. Mike Joy with Kevin Harvick, who started outside pole for the 500 in 2002, and Clint Boyer, who's best start in the 506th three different times. This is our new booth for 2024. Kind of nice to have the names etched on the seats instead <laughs> of just out there on duct tape. Uh, but here we go. It's such a unique night because, one, nobody's had a practice lap. Nobody's had a lap in these cars uh, on a super speedway since the last time you did last year, Kevin. And nobody knows what they've got. We've got new noses on two of the three makes of cars. We have drivers and crew chiefs in new places. Wow, this is going to be something. So there are two different things in play here. One, make the race. That's the job of six different drivers who are in the open cars, the non-chartered teams. There are four spots available, two of which will be guaranteed tonight. And then it's the matter of the front row for the Daytona 500. Tonight, the two fastest cars in round two of qualifying will secure the front row for Sunday's Great American Race, just the way it's been done since 1959. Now, this is the 30th year of the two-round qualifying format, but I guess uh, kind of the scary thing right now, Clint, is nobody knows what they've got. Scary thing, they haven't been on the track, no practice, nothing, no, but you need me to lock in. That means this car cannot bottom out it, and I have to get up through the gearbox. Some of these guys haven't even drove these cars. The launch off of pit road is so important, getting up through the gearbox like I was talking about, making this track as big as possible to get that almighty speed built up for that magical lap. And for me, this was always one of the most stressful qualifying sessions that we could make because of the fact that you haven't sat in that car. You can do all the simulator sessions that you want, guess what? It's not gonna buck and spin the tires or bog down or do any of the things that it's getting ready to do in real life. So that big black oval is getting ready to be the dyno and tell us the story of who's got the fastest car. Well, the fastest cars in the last few years have come from Hendrick Motorsports and particularly Alex Bowman, but there are gonna be a host of greats that are going to be chasing those two front row spots that Hendrick has had locked up uh, for the last few years here. Eight out of the last nine, unbelievable stat. But you know, Kevin, those Stuart Haas cars have been extremely fast the last time they've been on these drafting style tracks. Well, I think when you, when you look at qualifying for the super speedways, the SHR cars have been really good. The Fords in general have been really good, but they've got the new dark horse this year. They've got that new nose on, on the front of that car. So qualifying is going to tell us to tell. All you hear, all you hear is it's got less drag and it's got more downforce. But we yeah, hope. We're getting ready to find well, for out. For me, it's these six. These six guys, these open cars, going for these two spots tonight, man, they are nervous. All right, two very different agendas. One, make the race. Two, win the pole or start on the front row for the Daytona 500. We'll find out who and how next. The 2024 Cup Silly season has been a wild one, so let's connect the dots to catch up on all the changes. Hall of Famer Tony Stewart looks to replace two SHR veterans. The closer Kevin Harvick calls it 1042, ending his historic career. Josh Berry moves up from the Xfinity Series to take the reins of the legendary Ford. Put out a bolo on the number 14. They might surprise you. Eric Almarola steps away from racing full time, leaving the number 10 car open for Noah Gragson. The 2022 truck champion Zane Smith signed a new deal with Trackhouse Racing, but will drive the number 71 car for Spire Motorsports in 2024. Rising star Carson Hosevar will pilot the number 77 after competing for a truck series title last year. Justin Haley said goodbye to Wally Grayson, signing a multi-year deal with Rick Ware Racing. Replacing Haley at Colic, 2021 Xfinity champion Daniel Hemrick. AJ Allmendinger also steps out of the number 16 car to go full-time racing in the Xfinity Series, opening up the car for a host of different drivers. John Hunter Nemechek makes his return to the Cup Series with Legacy Motor Club in the number 42 Chevy. What's that? 
Oh yeah, the seven-time championship owners Jimmy Johnson and the King Richard Petty change lanes as Legacy Motor Club joins the Toyota State. Speaking of Jimmy Johnson, he is back in the number 84 car on a part-time schedule. Even with all the shakeup, 2024 is looking to be a year you won't forget. We'll add to that more than a dozen spotter changes up on the roof. A whole lot of crew chief changes. Wow. Things are different this year. Well, you got your eyes on, Kevin. Well, you, you showed Josh Berry. Obviously, I know that situation <laughs> very well with, with Rodney, and I think tonight is a is a great night for those guys to get started, along with Chase Elliott. I mean, you look at Chase and everything that he did last year, I think they're going to get back on the, the horse this year and do good. I like what I see out of Spire. I mean, you know, to, to – Gain cars within your stable and do those things takes a, a tremendous amount of resources. And for them to find that, put all that together, I'm excited for them. All right, let's go trackside and join Jamie Little. And Mike, all eyes will be on Hendrick Motorsports tonight, of course, going for the pole here. And Chase Elliott, good to see him, had shoulder surgery in the offseason. You told me you're feeling pretty good. So what are your thoughts on this, going for the pole for what would be maybe a third pole for you? Yeah, I'm, yeah, just looking forward to getting the season started. It's, uh, you know, Speed Weeks is an exciting time. If you're a race fan, I consider myself a race fan. So I'm excited to be here. I think, uh, you know, Hendrick Motorsports as a whole has always had a, a lot of success, uh, you know, throughout qualifying over the years uh, for for the 500. We'd love to continue that, but we'd really love to be good on Sunday. So uh, we hope we can get our Napa Chevy to do both, and, and I think we can. So looking forward to uh getting the season rolling and, and trying to get off to a good start. All right, good luck to you. Thanks. All right, let's go over to Josh Sims. Hey, with 2015 Daytona 500 winner Joey Logano. And as we get set for qualifying, as we head into this new season, and you got the new body with the car, as you go for the pole, what can you learn out there tonight to help you going forward? Um, I always kind of learn what you got <laughs> at this point, at least from, from speed. Uh, it's so hard. Right? You go out there, no practice. You hope that, you know, the setup's close and that we're not hitting the track and we're maximizing everything. But... You, you can't adjust it much. I mean, you get a, maybe a couple of little things, but not really uh, in between the rounds. So um, pretty pretty challenging night, but it's kind of what makes this night so special is that these guys have been working all winter on these cars, and it's really, honestly, tonight's about the team. Uh, it's a real good measuring stick to see where your super speedway program is, and we'll figure out more about the Dark Horse Mustang as we continue throughout Speed Week and also uh, into the first few races. Appreciate your time, and good luck, Joey. Mike? Thanks, Josh. The cars are through inspection and ready to roll. When we come back, we'll qualify for the Daytona 500. Seven degrees, winds out of the northeast at six. Forecast for clear weather and the track temp 67 degrees. Single car qualifying, two rounds. Top 10 in the second round to set the front row for the Daytona 500. And the first car to roll. Uh-oh. Oh, we're checking the brakes, right, Kevin? Yeah, what, what they do right there is when that car launches and then has to stop is to make sure that the teams don't pull the brake pads away from the rotors. So you'll see every car do that as we go through this. Which we did for years. Yeah. Rookie Carson Hosevar ran nine cup races last year. He uh, made his cup debut subbing for Corey LaJoy, who was subbing for Chase Elliott. And he is a rookie out of Michigan for Spire Motorsports. Let's go under the helmet with Carson. I grew up in Portage, Michigan. My favorite driver growing up was Dale Jr. My dad's favorite was Jimmy Johnson, so it was teammates, but at the same time, um, you know, I was hoping Dale, you know, won. He was kind of the underdog a little bit. I don't know what I treat myself to when we win. More treat my team. We, we, we all just, you know, go hang out after, or I don't think any of us go to, go to sleep, and we'll both, we'll all either, you know, go to Waffle House, put the trophy on the table, and, and, and go eat, which most of the time is about breakfast time by the time we get home. Driving to Cambridge, Ziegler Auto Group Chevrolet. I just watched, you know, we're going to go there right off the bat. My team, my football team, they have a post-game championship party. Why? At Daytona Beach, Florida, is a Waffle House, the only place to go after the race to celebrate. Some bar around here needs to capitalize on this. I'm just saying that right now. <laughs> Hit me right there. He explained the whole situation. Alex Bowman won the pole for this race last year on a night much like this, ending about 10 o'clock, as we will tonight. And you know where he went with that pole trophy and his girlfriend? Steak and Shake. 
down Speedway Boulevard. So we, he mixed it up. A we were bit. sitting in there having dinner, and, and here he comes. I think Roger Pinsky, the captain, did that. But Stenhouse went to Waffle House last uh, last year. I remember. I think we need to be hosting a, a championship, Daytona championship party somewhere. Might get on that, Kevin. All right. All right. You, you, we're going to transition. Here we go. From party to racing. That's anytime right. this week, right? All right. Anytime. 50-58, Kevin, is that fast? You know, Clint? Time will tell. I think as, as we go through this qualifying session, I don't think we really know because we have we have two different brands of cars, the Toyota and the Ford, that have new bodies and a lot of a different agendas tonight. You'll hear us talk about that. So here's Anthony Alfredo from Richfield, Connecticut. For Beard Motorsports, part-time team out of Michigan. Uh, Brendan Gaughan used to drive for them. Anthony has 38 cup starts, best uh, finish a top 10 at Talladega. This is the Death Wish Coffee Chevrolet. And this is one of your six open cars. Now the comparison here is to the second fastest open car in last year's Daytona qualifying, just to see where we stack up year to year. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a great reference for all of us to see what these teams have done over the winter as they make their cars better and and, and they've certainly done that. They, they have done <laughs> that, and that's what's that's what you do over the three months leading into the Daytona 500 from the end of the season. Where that's going to come in key is when these other five cars, these five open cars that are racing for these two spots tonight to lock themselves into the big Daytona 500. That's when that ghost car is going to come in so handy. 50.098 for Josevar. And that'll bring out Zane Smith in the WeatherTech Chevrolet, 24 years old from Huntington Beach, California. He's the 2022 Truck Series champion of NASCAR, has nine victories in that series, and he is a Rookie of the Year contender. Great guy, awesome wheel man. I think you're going to be seeing a lot of Zane Smith this year. Yeah, and it's great to see new sponsors on, on cars. You see WeatherTech on, on the hood of that race car, and I like Zane Smith, too. I, you know, I think when, when you look at the truck series and the championship uh, and the way that he did it, like he was a grinder, and he was always, wasn't always the fastest, and when he was, he usually capitalized on it, but there's some of those races that he would win that he just came out of nowhere. Saw some sparks fly as he got down just a little bit too close to the apron down there in the corner. Oh, that's perfect, Clint. He's right in, the, right in the, the groove there. Now, Alfredo quickest so far, but he was two miles per hour slower than Josevar on his get up to speed lap. Well, and, and that's where the driver responsibility comes in of getting off a of pit road and getting up to speed and doing it the first time here at, at Daytona and not having any practice in the actual car can be difficult. So many things have to go right. So many. Your launch has to be perfect. Getting up through the gearbox. Do not hit that rev limiter. It slows it down a lot. Making sure you make the track as big as possible. Second fastest for Zane Smith. Berlin, Connecticut's Ryan Priest in the HaasTooling.com Ford. There's some new Priest paving here at Daytona, and we'll show you why. He had an eventful year on Super Speedway. Is that 41? Oh. Well, that was Talladega. Hard at Talladega. Huge hit. Never forget that. Oh, it's not over. Here at Daytona, that transition from pavement to grass, got air under the car, and over and over he went. Yeah, and being on the same team with Ryan last year and seeing that wreck and seeing that car. But seeing him the next day, he was, he was very motivated to make sure that everybody knew that he could get back in, in that race car the next week and was doing everything that he could do to make sure that was possible. So he's one tough dude. Well, his like, eyeballs weren't very motivated. They well, were black, jet black. Looked just like Ricky Rudd in 1984 here, flipped in the Bush Clash. Won a lot of seven in the 500. Yeah, Priest won Sorry. last night, didn't he? Yeah, he did. At uh, New Smyrna in the tour type modifieds. Still likes to dabble in that when uh, his schedule permits. Well, the story's starting to build. And Priest is fastest. 49.95. That is a lot faster than Carson Hosevar. Justin Haley getting up to speed in the treetop apple juice. Uh, Jacob Ford. Jamie? How about the 2023 champion, Ryan Blaney here? You've been smiling all day. What's life been like for the champ? Uh, it's nice to be back at the racetrack. It's nice to uh, you know, just be back doing what we do, you know, and uh, I think, uh, you know, me getting engaged, it was bigger than winning the championship, I think. The engagement was definitely bigger, and I know my Gianna's watching, so I, I definitely had to say it. But, uh, no, it's just nice to be back down here at Daytona. You know, everyone looks forward to this all winter. 
Um, you know, I know everyone says they like the downtime, but we all look forward to this. You know, in the back of your head, you know what it means. And um, great to have Pete back on board our Ford Mustang and with Menards and uh, see what kind of speed we have in the new Dark Horse Mustangs. I'm, I'm excited to see what we have. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Justin Haley, a winner at Daytona in the July race, 2019. And I, I, I really love uh, the fact that, that Justin Haley uh, is up on the screen right now because I think this kid is great. He's done really good with the equipment that he's had, and he is one heck of a super speedway racer, so I think he's going to do great at Rick, Rick Ware Racing. This will be his fourth Daytona 500, and Haley is third of five so far. You Larry know, McReynolds. Yeah, looking at lap times, I, I think the conditions has some speed in it. You look, the wind is not blowing. It is cool. It is cold. These engines will make a lot of horsepower. And, you know, right now, Ryan Priest ran at 49.95. We've only had five drivers qualify. Alex Bowman in round one last year was a 49.71, only about two tenths quicker. Alfredo right now, an open driver, is 50.09. Jimmy Johnson was the fastest open driver a year ago at a 50.20. I think this track and the condition has some speed in it. Seems to. Thanks, Larry. David Reagan is a veteran of the Daytona 500. This will be his 17th. He is driving the buildsubmarines.com Ford for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. To your point, though, Larry, I mean, Priest putting that lap up. I mean, Stuart Haas, the last three drafting poles, right, for these drafting style racetracks. So you know those cars have speed, and I think the proof's in the pudding with Priest. Now, Reagan is one of the open cars. There are six of those looking for four spots, trying to lock in here tonight. The fastest two open cars are locked into the 500. And Reagan right now, third overall, second to Alfredo among the cars that must time in. I think we had have lost a bet on that one, Clint. I, I didn't I didn't uh, have Alfredo beating Reagan. I know we talked a lot about how fast and, and what their uh, what their goal was as far as speed tonight. Well, when you put David Reagan in a, you know, a slot that's part of that open conversation, right? He's underneath the RFK banner and we know how strong those cars have been on these type of racetracks. You're exactly right. I thought David Reagan would for sure be a, a shoe in bet for that. Here's AJ Allmendinger for Colleg Racing in the Celsius Chevrolet. This will be his 11th Daytona 500. Ran the whole Cup Series in this car last year. This year he's going to run the whole Xfinity Series and just make a few starts over here on the Cup Series. He's going to come back over here and do a little <laughs> cherry picking <laughs> yes. uh, on the road courses. Uh, AJ obviously very good on, on the road courses. Has done has done well in the super speedways with the college car and and he's going to go to the Xfinity Series and have some fun every day. Yeah, I mean it fit him so well. I was listening to his interview at the media day uh, on the way down here and it just fits him. I remember when he you know, had all that success at college racing in the series. You could see the fun that he was having on his face week in and week out. Pretty good paycheck here for the 500, though, right? You see cherry picking. I, I think it's this is a good one that you want to be in. I mean, I'm sure that's probably one of the reasons that he oh. chose the Daytona 500. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I would say you're right. So last year, B.J. McLeod. Uh, Joe Falcon Partners, Live Fast Motorsports, sold their charter. And they are entered here as an open car and will run, I guess, half a dozen races this year uh, with the car and equipment. They sold the charter, not the team. So here is BJ from Florida trying to make his sixth Daytona 500. Spire Motorsports uh, bought that charter. He went through the trial right there and just barely brushed the, the splitter on that apron. And I will tell you, Clint, that is one of the scariest things that you can do on your first lap in qualifying because with this splitter, it wants to take the car and just yank it to the left because it's so stiff. Know what's different about this car? Blank hood and quarter panels. However, as often happens, a car will make it into the 500 and they'll acquire some sponsorship between now and Sunday, and that is BJ's hope. Pretty good sales pitch. Yep. I like BJ McLeod. He did such a good job with that program. Obviously sold the charter and, and for good reason, but uh, to be here and still be a part of, trying to be a part of the Cup Series, I love it. John Hunter Nemechek is back in the Cup Series this year with Legacy Motor Club, who's undergone a lot of changes, most notably manufacturers. They are now a Toyota team. Here's the Dollar Tree Camry. Josh? Down here with Brad Kislowski, and as you go to chase the pole tonight, I also know you talked earlier about the importance of making sure David Reagan gets into the race to join you and, of course, Chris Buescher to help with the 500. 
Yeah, uh, it's going to be real close. We'll see what uh, the other cars put up. But uh, David with the uh, the build subs for it, it's uh, that 50-20. I, I think it's probably going to take like a flat or a team to, to lock in on time today. But uh, fingers crossed. But uh, he's already gone. Now i got to go get the six car and run the fastest lap we can here. Uh, pace seems like it's pretty fast with that 49-90, but uh, we'll find out. Appreciate your time, Brad. Mike. Thanks, Josh. Ben Bayshore is the crew chief for uh, Nemechek this year. He's going to make his second Daytona 500 start on Sunday. This will be his first full season in Cup since 2020. And so much has changed since then. Yeah, with this particular car, it's going to be like he's starting. He's he's going to be a rookie because of the fact that this car just drives and races and all the things that you do with it are so much different. But I think John Hunter is is much more prepared than the last time he came to Cup. Well, he is eighth of nine. They're going to need to find some speed in that piece. Riley Hurst in the Monster Energy Ford, number 15 for Rick Ware Racing. This will be his second Daytona 500. He's made four starts in the Cup Series and finished top 10 in half of them. Well, he did a great job on the super speedways last year. Riley was a teammate of mine. Uh, he came came and, and ran uh, really well at the Daytona 500 last year. And really was in the mix all day really at, at, at all of the super speedway races that he ran so you see on the screen right here he's a touch faster than than Ryan Priest right now right down on that yellow line distance is is such a key thing when you're doing these qualifying laps to make the least amount of distance so you want to be as close as you can to that yellow line not only down the straightaway but in the corners and sometimes as a driver you think you're right next to that yellow line and you still have another foot to to uh, to get to the yellow line when you come back in and watch the videos but the engineers will quickly remind you top of the chart 49 94 14 one or excuse me six one <laughs> thousands faster I'm glad Ryan you said it's close yeah Let's just put it that That's way very close. very close you know, last year, the difference between 10th in the first round and moving on and 11th and not was what? Three inches. That Gosh, looks. I didn't think you listened in all those meetings, but you do. <laughs> Kevin. I'm, I'm impressed. Good job. And then St uh, Stat Guy Russell down there in the end. Oh, uh, Russell had the board. But I, I do remember I got that. You. And you know where to look in the booth. I'll yeah, Austin Dillon. Man. One one thousandth of a second is what it was. It's three <laughs> inches. Let's just... Simplify things. <laughs> Austin Dillon, pole sitter for the 500 in 2014. He won it in 2018 in the Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet for Richard Childress Racing. Wow. Well, that one's time for speed. Time has marched on. This is going to be his 12th Daytona 500. I remember when they were driving him to high school. You were all over it, Kevin. Look how much faster he is than a current leader, Herbs. It's going to be a whale of a lap, guys. Looking for a big turnaround this year. Obviously, Daytona 500 winner. This track's been good to him. Big lap. By two tenths of a second, Austin Dillon is fastest of the 11 drivers who have timed in thus far. The next group of cars includes Hall of Famer and seven time champ Jimmy Johnson. Full position qualifying on FS1. Lower right of your screen, Carson Hosevar had the fastest trap speed of the start finish line after completing his warm up lap. But he right now sits ninth. Austin Dillon fastest, second there as Jimmy Johnson gets ready to climb aboard. Well, Josebar did a great job. He, he just, his car's slow. Uh, yes, that's I don't exactly know any, I don't, what I was going to say. I don't like know any other way days. to explain it. I'm sorry to everybody, but. The I, old days, you would overheat it. Right. right. You put too much tape on it, overheat it, and it, it was slowed down before you got the line. That's I, right. I think it's just. She's just slow. Yeah, oh, she's, yeah, he did a great job getting up to speed. This is J.J. Yaley out of Phoenix, Arizona. Multiple USAC champion in open wheel racing and in NASCAR Cup Series competition. Six Daytona 500s under his belt with the best start of 12th, the best finish of 10th. This is the NY Racing Team's 100 Coconut Water Chevrolet. And we heard Brad Keselowski talking about it this this is a lap. This is one of your six. David Reagan really needs to outrun his car. Well, and one of your one of my favorite J.J. Yaley stats is the fact that he has, I believe I'm saying this right, the best run at the Chili Bowl through the soup. Oh. Yeah, I think he came from. Yes, he came from deep, deep 
it's yeah. alphabet soup. They have all these feature events to try to get to the main. That's right. And it's the A feature, B feature. That's why they call it the alphabet soup. Yep. And he had to run more of them to get there than I guess, anybody, I guess else. anybody in history. Yep. That's exactly what you thought I was going to talk about, wasn't it, Clint? Triple crown winner. I, I just couldn't believe you brought up dirt racing. I know. That's and he is new to this car as of yesterday. He's uh, signed to drive it here in Daytona. And they have to either time their way in tonight or race their way in tomorrow night to make the 500. Twelfth for Yaley, 51-26. They'll need to find some speed. Here is Daniel Hemrick. And this is the Circle Chevrolet for Colleg Racing. Jamie? Mike, check it out. It's the famous number four from Stuart Haas. Got his old team, Kevin Harvick. Look at, here's Cheddar, but look, I'm going to introduce you. New driver, Josh Berry. He is the rookie getting ready to qualify for his first ever Daytona 500. What's the day been like? This is such an awesome team that we've gotten to know with Kevin over the years, but what's the day just been like with them? Yeah, no, it's been a lot of fun. Obviously, just getting to know all this group over the off season has just been uh, just a dream come true, really. This Rodney, Cheddar, all these guys have uh, just been a pleasure to work with. So we're just ready to get going, really, at this point, right? We got a beautiful, bright orange Sunny D Ford. We're ready to go qualify for this Daytona 500 and race tomorrow night. Good luck. Thank you. Cheddar does have a name. It's uh, something really difficult to pronounce, like Bob Smith. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. <laughs> I know. And what a great experience uh, because of the fact that um, Josh was getting in the car and getting to know him and watching him work with the team has been a fun experience to watch from the outside looking in. Hemrick, the 2019 Cup Rookie of the Year and the former Legends Million winner at Charlotte Motor Speedway, has clocked in sixth fastest. Setting the stage for Noah Gregson in the Black Rifle Coffee Ranger Boat Sport. This will be Gregson's third Daytona 500 with three different teams. Well, I can tell you that the 10 car at, at Stuart Haas Racing has typically done a really good job of qualifying and, and running well with uh, Eric Almarola and everybody uh, that was on that car last year. So I expect this car to, to run well and right with his teammates of uh, Ryan Priest and Riley Harris. So the ghost car now will compare to 10th because that is the cutoff to make it to round two. Good looking race car uh, and you're right you know you look over your shoulder thinking back to the Daytona 500s every time you're down here that 10 car was a factor with Eric Almarola. I think it's going to be a, a great year for Noah good opportunity good home good team. He can make the most of it. Drew Glickenster for the crew chief so Three Daytona 500s for Gregson with three different teams, three different crew chiefs. Nice run, fourth fastest, 49.97. Right there with his teammate. Yeah, and as a team owner, that's what you want to see. You want to see your cars grouped together. That means that everybody in the shop is doing the things that they're supposed to do with the details and making their cars run the same. Well, it also means that they all agree with one another. True. There's a lot of lot of thought processes and do, do we want to handle? Do I want speed? What do you want out of this thing? When everybody agrees, it sure makes those decisions a lot better. Third generation racer, Corey LaJoy, making his eighth Daytona 500. Uh, this will be his fifth with crew chief Ryan Sparks. This is the Chili's Ketcherita Chevrolet. Say that three times fast, Mike. <laughs> uh, just order me another one. That's right. I was listening again to XM on the drive down here and listen to uh, Corey talk about, you know, his season, his hopes, um, you know, and, and the process that the path that he's been on with Spire Motorsports by far the best uh, situation that he's ever been. Finally got some teammates uh, and, and Lo and behold, you look over and got a new new sponsor on the hood as well. So. Well, they've they've run good and they've had some some chances to to run up front and win races and and hadn't quite capitalized on that. But I think Corey has learned from that and the things he needs to do a little bit differently. He has two top 10 finishes in the Daytona 500 and LaJoy times in 10th for now. He's in that top 10 that will transfer to the next round. You're riding on board the Mahindra Tractors Ford with Chase Briscoe for Stuart Haas Racing. Let's go under the helmet with him. I'm from Mitchell, Indiana. 
My favorite driver growing up was Tony Stewart. He was from Indiana. He raced sprint cars just like my dad raced sprint cars. I could watch him on TV on Sunday, but then also he would come and run local dirt tracks in Indiana, so I always thought that was just the coolest thing. In my bedroom had Tony Stewart stuff everywhere growing up. The Brickyard 400 has been something I've always wanted to just race in, so I'll get to do that. So I would say the Brickyard 400 at the top of the list. Like, you, oh. see, you see Chase with his hand up on the window right there. I never like to do that because I just wanted to put the car in the right spot. And, and they're putting their hand up there to try to block the air from the, the A-post bar and the window net. But look at how rough that thing's exactly. riding, Clint. Pretty rigid ride. That's how you get speed out of that thing. Low, that is, low is fast. Frisco breaks into the top 10 with a fourth place run, knocking out uh, Corey LaJoy. See him try to look over at the scoring pylon in the infield, see yeah. where he was at? That was cool. Yeah, and and he's doing his job right there. You heard him shut the car off and start the process of cooling the engine down, down the back straight away. Uh, and there's there's quite the process of, you hear him, hear him coasting. You hear him coasting right here. Uh, with He's got the clutch in, he's got the gas pedal down, trying to cool the intake manifold and let as much air run through the radiator as possible because there's no cool down units anymore. You can put a fan on the front of the car, but you got to keep the car cool and get it as cool as possible for the second round if you make it. Larry Mack, what is it about those Stuart Haas Fords? Yeah, what I'm seeing right now, and, and you talked about it, this is what an owner loves to see because the three that's qualified, a 95, a 96, and a 97 right now, third, fourth, and fifth. Well, the car that just got passed on the apron is Kaz Gralla uh, from outside Boston. That is the front row motorsports entry, and the Rudebush Ford did not get up to speed. Now, Gralla's going to run for Rookie of the Year this year, trying to make his third Daytona 500. And this is an open car, which means this is one of his two chances to make the race. Well, you can hear it running. He either got it back running, down the cylinder, or something there, Larry, but I definitely heard it running. Yeah, that's once you leave pit road, that's the end of your run. You can't come back to pit road. Which is exactly why you see Anthony Alfredo realizing, hey guys, I think we just locked ourselves in. That is That's the right. great news that they were looking for. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> they know they will race here on Sunday. They're going to sleep a lot better tonight. Having to go into those duels, racing your way in for the Daytona 500 last spot, that is a nerve wracking situation to say the least. Now, no one is knocked out today, but. The Beard family celebrating as Alfredo has locked in to the 500. Let's listen in to the 36 here. I uh, never got a second gear when I went to pull it. The shifter was just dead and loose, not attached to anything. So not shifting at all for you right now? The, the lever's completely disconnected. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, That's a product of no some... practice. You can see him shaking his head out of frustration. Does, does that happen here at the track or back at the shop? That's all at the shop. I mean, that's all preparation from the shop unless something broke. So that could, it could go either way. It could have been something loose or something broke. So we won't know until they dissect it. Jamie? How about the emotions down here, Anthony Alfredo? You guys mentioned it. You just found out you locked yourself into the Daytona 500. Linda Beard, the owner right here. What are these emotions like for you guys? Congratulations. It's, this is insane. I mean, we're just talking about every possible scenario we might find ourselves in today, tomorrow, and, and obviously Sunday. But to make it to Sunday is a, a challenge. It's such a competitive field of open cars and drivers behind the wheel. And uh, I'm just really thankful for the Beard family giving me this opportunity and Deathwish Coffee coming on board. We have a clearly a fast Chevrolet Camaro. I mean, we built beat a lot of big teams so far. There's a lot of cars to go. But to know that we're in and could not have to race in tomorrow and just remove ourselves from some of the, the sketchy circumstances and focus on Sunday is, is uh, just an amazing, amazing feeling. Congratulations, Anthony. Thank you. This is a family race team out of Michigan with one full-time employee, and they're in the 500. Well, the Beard family, you know, they, they, they have a long history in the, in the ARCA series and, and the things that they have done. And, but what a, what a great emotion to see. It just shows you how much it means to make this race. Absolutely. It's a big deal. Here's second generation racer Harrison Burton driving for one of Daytona's all time winningest teams, the Wood Brothers. It's the Motorcraft Dex Imaging Ford. And it will be Burton's 
third Daytona 500. He made the second round last year, started eight, or excuse me, two years ago, started eighth. Well, he's certainly driving off from Haley in 10th right there, but there's a lot of cars to go. Yeah, and right, right now, Clint, that's a, you know, a little less than a half a second from, from first to 10th, and I think as we run here, obviously that, that will get tighter, but um, you know, you look at you look at those Fords of, of the Stuart Haas bunch up there. It sure looks like the Fords are going to be pretty fast again. So the Wood Brothers operate as an alliance with Team Penske, and Burton just put that car in second place, 49.90. 49.903, P2 right now. Do all your cooldown stuff, please. There you go. That will bump Justin Haley from the top 10, put David Reagan on the hot seat for making it into round two. David Reagan used to be teamed with Todd Gilliland's dad, David. And boy, they made Daytona and Talladega their playground uh, for Front Row Motorsports. This is the Jenner 8 Generator Ford. It's David. One thing I notice about the 38 car of uh, Todd Gilliland right now, it's rough. Like, it's it's riding rough. And, and a lot of that is just how much risk the team wants to take and how, how much speed you want to get out of the car and all that for the most part is done with the with the shock adjustments that that you have and sometimes some spring choices to go with it but you see that car bouncing around right there and they want to keep the car as low to the ground as possible by just tying it down with the with the shocks yeah you can definitely see that baby bouncing around yeah. violently and it's hard to explain you know to somebody at home just how that is i mean that is a rough rough ride when you're inside of it you saw chase briscoe's helmet his eyes were bouncing up and down inside of his own helmet that's the roughest ride yet though that, that i've oh, seen for sure especially with the front end third for gilliland and it puts ford in six of the top seven spots behind the chevrolet of austin dillon That will bump David Reagan out of the top 10 and set the stage for Austin Sindrick. Driving for Team Penske in the discount tire Ford, similar to the one he used to win the Daytona 500 two years ago. This will be his fourth 500. And these guys need to have a good year, Clint. You know, they've, they've struggled a little bit as they've, as they've gone through the last couple of years, but if you're going to put one win together, <laughs> I would like it to be this one. He put the right the one together. The old 500. You know, big ring. Big ring, Kevin. Did you bring yours this weekend? The ring? Yeah. Um, I don't know where it no, is. No, you're right. I don't know where it is. Come on, man. You know, and you said it. I mean, looking for a huge turnaround for the season, but needs this race. Last, uh, you know, the clash out in L.A. didn't go as planned for them, so has to feel good to get back in that hot ride and get out here doing what you're doing. The one thing I can tell you about him, though, from his teammates, is they talk about his work ethic and how hard Austin works to be uh, in that race car and do the things he needs to do. Great Our run. Number two, P2. Second fastest for Cindric, 49.79. Half a tenth off of the fastest speed. This next one right here, ladies and gentlemen, this is a big, big deal. It's well, the last of our open cars. It's seven-time champion Jimmy Johnson. And this launch, this getting up through the gears, this is so important. David Reagan and RFK, they're probably hoping for a gear shift uh, malfunction, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, he heard a lot of wheel spin at the beginning of that. And right now, Jimmy's looking at his dash, just trying to hit all those RPM marks just as perfect as he can. Now, what he doesn't want to know is his teammate, and you said this, Kevin, John Hunter Nemechek, with his 50, uh, 60. That is not going to cut it. He's going to have to have something trimmed out better than his teammate. So what's about to happen here is either David Reagan or Jimmy Johnson will lock into the Daytona 500 with this lap. And you see David Reagan right there at a 50-20. Has to be faster. He'll be racing tomorrow. This is the Carvana Toyota. Yes, Toyota, new manufacturer for Legacy Motor Club, the former Petty team for 2024. Jimmy Johnson has two Daytona 500 poles. And to lock in, he's got to beat David Reagan or have his fate determined in tomorrow night's duel. We heard David Reagan ask for it. Where's that ghost tracker lap tracker at? And that's exactly what he got. 
But so far so good David you're looking good. Now last year Johnson did time into the 500 on pole qualifying night as an open car. No, I'm going to tell you both of these guys are plenty experienced enough to race their way in tomorrow night in those duels. That's Dave, however, excuse yeah. me, that's David's dad, Ken Reagan. He's raced here in the Daytona 500. Runs the Legends Car Program down in Atlanta for Speedway Motorsports. There it is, Reagan 50-20, Johnson 50-32. Josh down here with David Reagan as he celebrates he's going to be in the Great American Race this weekend. Hey, listen, Brad Kozlowski said earlier you were a free agent steal, not just because you can get in, but you could win it. You're going to have a chance to get in. You, you know, Josh, um, yeah, it's always big to be in the Daytona 500 and the whole week I've just been trying to uh, make sure we didn't make any mistakes and I, I really felt like we were uh, going to have a shot at a top 10 or top 12 starting spot, but uh, just shows all the hard work. This is buildsubmarines.com. Uh, four team is done, and Derek Finley, uh, he puts a lot of effort into the race team at RFK, and I've uh, worked with him in the past, and he has been nervous as a cat all afternoon, and so uh, I'm really proud for Derek and, uh, and proud uh, for the whole RFK guys, and appreciate uh, Brad Keselowski and Jack Roush uh, giving me an opportunity to come down here to try to win a Daytona 500. Congrats, David. Yeah, thank you. Here's the Advent Health Toyota for Eric Jones for Legacy Motor Club. This will be Jones' eighth 500. His first cup win came here at Daytona in July of 2018. Yeah, and once again, 11th quick for Eric Jones there. You see how rough the ride is, but you saw him come up off a of turn four that you pointed yeah. out there, Clint, just how that car would just jerk around and it, he would jerk the wheel a little bit just because of how rough the ride actually is on the racetrack. It almost looked like it got a loose, maybe out from underneath of and, him just a little bit. And you see when he slows down, it gets worse. Well, Jones and Almondinger are tied for 10th fastest right now. Now we'll move to the top 20 cars in cup points. Now that Anthony Alfredo and David Reagan have timed into the Daytona 500. When we come back, 2023's top 20, Denny Hamlin first up. Welcome back to Daytona 500 pole qualifying. That's over at the Daytona dog track. Used to be outside turn one. Now it's outside, it's halfway to land. It is a long way. Yeah. It took us a while, Kevin, to figure out where it was. Yeah. You knew exactly where it was, though. Well, I, all right, here we go. Let's here see what the driver does here. Got to stop. Make sure your brake pads aren't pulled back. Oh, he's saying. Oh, he's making them stop. They're making them come to a complete stop. Oh, boy. You know, and as rigid as we run these cars, Kevin, you were talking about it. Spinning your tires too much right there, you could get yourself in trouble. He spun them a lot right there, and he goes immediately for the window. It's a lot going on with one hand on the wheel at a time with the shift and trying to keep the air out of the car. And, and the, the teams and the drivers all have a plan when they come out. They want to execute, and that's what they decided they thought was best for speed, and he's executing it. Denny's been so good on all the super speedway racetracks but particularly at the daytona 500 three of the last eight just a machine and five of the last eight top five you, you, you know could, when you, you could come back win the clash at daytona 500 for the second time in the same year a lot of threes up there a couple of ones on the side of that car the fedex toyota for joe gibbs racing for denny hamlin out of chesterfield virginia And that is not easy to do right there with one hand on the wheel and, and holding everything up uh, with your left hand up, trying to block that air. Like I say, I never did that because I wanted to be as smooth as possible with the wheel, but he's doing a pretty good job with his repaired shoulder and everything he's got going on, holding that wheel pretty straight. Right now, the fastest Toyota, Eric Jones, 50.101, same as A.J. Allmendinger, who sits 10th. You think about all the Toyota teammates that have been in the Daytona 500 and to believe that he's the only Toyota guy that to win the Daytona 500 is pretty hard to believe. A lot of, lot of good drivers in that camp. 16th for Denny Hamlin, 50-29. And uh, I would say this is not a surprise because in past years, Toyotas have not shown all their speed on qualifying day. But boy, 
when it comes race time, they're ready. They seem to handle on that last lap. <laughs> and that's what you want. You want your car to handle and, and be able to push and be pushed. Is this weird, Kevin? Well, I was I was mentally prepared for Josh Berry to drive the four car. I, I went through this whole transition with Josh and with Rodney and Stuart Haas Racing to get Josh prepared uh, and be a part of the moment. You you, you go through so much as, as you go through this process. Uh, you saw him a little high in the corner yeah. right there. But it looks like it's got pretty good speed. The Sunny D Ford that Kevin Harvick drove last year, the number four for Stuart Haas Racing. Josh Berry out of Tennessee running for Rookie of the Year. This will be his first 500. You see all three of his teammates. Larry was all over at 95, 96, 97. Let's see where he ends up. Losing a little time as, as he goes through the lap here. But I can't wait to see these guys get in a rhythm and just start to race. I, I know so much of, about the team and, and have been with Josh as he's raced late models. Let's see, clock's in 12. Another 50-10. 33-year-old rookie out of Tennessee as we watch uh, Chase Elliott climb aboard. Going back to Josh Berry for just a second, I know when we would qualify, we would always try to put a little more handling in our car so that we could do all those things that we were talking about. So that might be the speed difference between the other SHR cars. Let's see what Brad Keselowski can do. Now a co-owner at Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. This is the Castrol Edge 4. This will be the 15th Daytona 500. For Brad, let's go under the helmet. Rochester Hills, Michigan. My favorite driver growing up was Kyle Petty. I think the hardest part about being a NASCAR Cup Series driver is, is balancing all the work commitments and still trying to not go insane. The race I haven't won that's on my list is the Daytona 500, and I hope this ages. <laughs> he has led eight different Daytona 500s has two top five finishes in the great American race. Just like all, you know, several other big name drivers. I mean, just this close every single year to getting the job done out here. Always a factor. He's going to win this You year. better keep an eye on this one. May, I mean, maybe not the Daytona 500. I think he has a shot to do it. But I, I mean, he's going to win this year, don't you think? Put it in the bank. I've, yes, this okay. car, that number six will be in victory lane with Brad Keselowski standing on top of it. 14th for Keselowski. Speaking of Daytona 500 winners, here is Ricky Stenhouse, the defending champion of this race, who started on the pole here uh, in 2020 for JTG Doherty Racing. This is the Boost by Kroger Cottonelle Chevrolet. Always such an aggressive, you know, pusher, um, plate racer. He's just an aggressive driver behind the wheel, period, but always that way at a Daytona. Well, he's just a he's a he's a good super speedway racer because of that aggression and, and being willing to do the things that you have to do to push and shove like you say. Um, you know, I think this team has done a great job in, in preparing the, the super speedway cars through the years for him to, to come out and do that because of the fact that they know that he's going to go out and and give everything that he has and, and take those risks uh, to be good at super speedway racing. You see his hand on yeah. the on the a post bar there. Jody and Tad Geschechter started out with a Bush Series team, uh, brought it to Cup, a single, sometimes two-car team, picked up Brad Doherty, the NBA legend, as a co-owner, and won the Daytona 500 last year. Daytona 500 champ last year, and Kroger's such a huge supporter of this team for so many years. 17th. Ryan Blaney is the defending champion of the NASCAR Cup Series. He is driving the Menards Peak Ford for Team Penske. And let's go under the helmet with the champ. I was born in Hartford, Ohio. My favorite driver growing up, besides my dad, I was a big Jimmy Johnson fan. I want to treat myself a lot. Only my, my, my fiance, she always asked me, what do you want for Christmas? I was like, I don't need anything. I don't want anything. I'm fine. I was like, well, if we win a championship, we'll get a pool. She's been harping on me for a pool, 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 for like a year and a half. I was like, all right, I'll make you do. We win the championship. This is like in June, but we had a pool. Win the championship, and like one of the first things I said to her on stage, I'm like, well, I guess we're getting that pool after all. <laughs> so, he looks. <laughs> Sorry, I had a chance to interview him for this race uh, on Sunday, and and man. I obviously raced against him. Think a lot of the Blaney family. Kevin, you and I were uh, his dad's teammate at RCR. 
just good stock. He comes from really good stock, a racing family, and I was I was happy to see him win that championship. I think he's going to be a great champion. Ninth for Blaney, that knocks Almendinger out of the top ten. And he looks like he's twelve. It shaved his one beard, beard off. away. It's unbelievable it's how unbelievable. you shave that beard and you're right back to looking like you're twelve again. I don't have that anymore. It's not in my. Uh, First of the Hendrick Chevrolets to qualify will be Kyle Larson on the pole for this race in 2022. Outside pole last year. Rick Hendrick's cars have 16 Daytona 500 poles. Nine in a row. Except it's been a long time since they won the Daytona 500. Jimmy Johnson. These guys are hungry. Thinking back to this race a year ago, Kyle Larson was right there in the mix. When a caution came out and it handed Stenhouse the win, obviously he was in the lead. He was right there for a big block and, uh, you know, didn't work out for him. But I'm telling you, these guys, they are wanting and very hungry for a Daytona 500 win. Rick Hendrick expects them to come down here and qualify on the pole and win the race. That's the effort that that's the expectation, in my opinion, at Hendrick Motorsports. Oh, there's, every year. there's a surprise. Kyle Larson is fast. Yeah. <laughs> 4973 for the HendrickCars.com Chevrolet. Eight drivers in this field have won a Daytona 500 pole and half of those eight driver Hendrick Motorsports. Here's the Shell Penzoil Ford from Team Penske for Joey Logano. Out of Middletown, Connecticut, 2015 winner of this race. This will be Logano's 16th start in the 500. Four for Joe Gibbs Racing, and it'll be his 12th for Team Penske. Awesome super speedway racer, always up front. As you can see, he's got the speed, much like his teammate Ryan Blaney. And he also won. He also won a great sponsor. Got great in car with the Hunt Brothers Pizza folks there um, on my car for for so many years and. Now with uh, Joey Logano, and you see Joey's hand up, blocking that A post and head banging around. Got some bumps on the back straightaway. Now you just got to keep it on the bottom through the corner. As close you as you said can. that. It doesn't yeah. seem like you, you've been telling us about handling versus speed. Right? You know, we see these cars that are a little bit more rigid than others. I don't see him bouncing around quite as bad as a lot of those other guys. A little bit in the corner. A but little bit. <laughs> it's a lot. Man, did That's you see Briscoe's head inside his helmet? Look at that head. I think he's ready to put the race package back on. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that time. Look I, at that time. He's on the pole. <laughs> and well, he, not really, but he's on. He well, leads the group moving to the second round. Thank 49, you. 64. I'm learning. I'm learning the specifics. Okay. I'm not getting ahead of myself <laughs> on television. So I appreciate that correction. No problem. Well, he is for now. William Byron of the Exalta Chevrolet, the second of the Rick Hendrick Chevys to qualify. This will be his seventh Daytona 500, and he has a pole here in 2019 and three top five starts. I'm going to say it before you. I love the I love the the paint scheme on this car. Oh, awesome! At 24, it's a hot rod. It looks like a hot rod. You got exalt on your car. You got to have the best look paint job. Look at the job. speed of that hot rod. Saw it bottom out a little bit when it went into one and two. Right now, two Chevys and eight Fords to advance to the final round in the top ten. There are the manufacturers as they break out so far. I think that's about to change. As Byron times in fourth. All right. Running. Yep. Get it cooled down. Knocks out Noah Gregson. Tyler Reddick from Corning, California. Second year with 2311 racing. It'll be a sixth Daytona 500. And he'll be in the Nasty Beast Toyota. Nasty Beast. That is, a, that is one heck of a sponsor. What you got out there, Larry? Well, Mike talked about the Toyota effort. And, you know, they're right now, we've had about half of them qualify. Eric Jones in the 43 is fastest back at 15. Go back to last year. They had no Toyotas qualify inside the top 10, only one inside the top 18, and that was Bubba Wallace at 11th. They come here set up to race, not necessarily. A Toyota has never sat on the pole for the Daytona 500 in their 17 500s. So what he's saying is a lot has changed, but nothing's really changed. Right. 
Well, if they're making good handling, right, they got down force. And, and with that comes drag. That's going to slow it down. When you're in a big pack like you are at the Daytona 500, a lot of that starts to go out the window. Probably not going to lead the best, but she's going to push it's and handle a, good. It's a balance, and they, they should push better. When you look at the front of these Toyotas, they're much flatter. Yeah, I, I like what you said right there. We, we talk about these body changes on the Ford, the Toyotas. For the last several years, the Fords have had the upper hand in this. When we come to these super speedway races, they can push better than the other two. These Toyotas, they came to play. They've changed their bodies. They've changed the way that they're going to be able to push, and I think that's going to be a pivotal role in this race come Sunday. Well, they came to play, but did they come to qualify? Reddick, 25th. Here's his teammate at Joe Gibbs Racing, Christopher Bell, in the DeWalt Interstate Batteries Toyota. This will be Bell's fifth Daytona 500. He has two top five starts in four years. All right, Kevin, I've had enough. But you see everybody time, time and again, you know, we, we follow each other, but everybody's holding their hand up in the window now. What are we doing? Well, they're, they're just trying to block the air from, from coming in the car to, to try to create a little bit less drag. So the aero guys will tell you that, you know, it's worth, I, I would tell you one count maybe or two counts but usually it's so close that uh, you know a couple hundreds here and there will will make a difference but I I was never capable enough of driving smooth they tell me to put my hand up there and I was like there's no way I'm putting my hand up there I got to have two hands on the wheel so you're basically just trying to fill that void in between the window yeah. head and the a post he, correct? Needs, he needs longer arms that area has to be open so the driver could see his side view mirror yeah. which is required all right hanging on to tempt is Chase Briscoe as Christopher Bell is 22nd fastest. Next, 10 drivers to go. And the next driver on the clock will be Alex Bowman, who has an incredible run, a record run, of top front row starts in the Daytona 500. And he is the race's defending pole winner. Toyota. Now in the lower right, note the drivers who were fastest at the start-finish line, starting their timed lap. Now among the drivers who had the fastest laps, William Byron is not on this list, nor is Harrison Burton. Todd Gilliland, meaning they still have some speed to gain until they get up the speed lap? Absolutely, they can get a better launch. Let's listen. Ooh, I like that one, Kevin. Oh. Did the rev limiter just a little bit, but wanna, just tickled it. Just I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. It slows you down. Assuming all of these Hendrick cars are the same and every driver has the same opportunity and same equipment, the difference has to be the driver. And is it the way Alex Bowman launches? Uh, well, if he if he makes it, I'm going to tell you yes. I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to tell you that I'm going to be the bearer of bad news here, Clint. But. If he's he's just got to hit his points because he's in a fast race car, right? He's got to make sure that those shifts don't hit the rev limiter, don't spin the tires too much, do all those things. But he's he's obviously got teammates that are that are right up in the in the top ten, and I think he's going to be right up there with him too. Debbie, he just tickled it. It was nothing. Okay, it's just a little tickle. Three poles, two with uh, or one with Blake Harris, his current crew chief, and two with Greg Ives. I think. Oh, here it hit the ground. Pretty good too. Yes. Yeah. You notice that he put his, he had his hand up at the window, and as soon as it hit the ground, he was like, "Oh my God, I got to keep my hands on the wheel." Well, when it hit that hard, what, it what hit happens? Hard. It can bounce right out from underneath of you, keep yourself in trouble. I'd say it's going to hit again down here. Well, I he's got work to do to lock in to make tenth and make it to the second round, where the pole will be determined. It's about three tenths of a second, first to tenth. Here it hit. There's a bump right in the middle of three and four. That the car will just have one quick spike. Oh, this um, is going to be close. I don't think he's going to do it. I don't think he is either. Alex Bowman, 12th fastest, 49.99. So the things that I would critique right there, if I was going back and watching this to be productive as the as the team, I would say, okay, the car hit the ground a little bit too hard. Driver hit the rev limiter just a little bit, taking off. Just a few little things as as you go through the sequence. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what his speed was. You know, when we show those speeds at the uh, coming to green lap, what his was, I think it'll be a good tell-all sign. Ty Gibbs, 21 years old now, driving for his grandfather's team in his second Daytona 500. 
Last year he started 33rd, finished 25th, but he won Rookie of the Year last season. This poor, he is poised for a big year. I think he's ready. He's in the right uh, car, and I I think this is going to happen, Kevin. I just love the kid's work ethic. I, I you know I think he's aggressive. Um, he's intense. All the things that you want in a fiery, and he's young. And I just, I, you know, I think he did a phenomenal job last year finishing races and doing all the things that, that he's done. Um, and I think you're right. I think he's going to win this year. And he matured so much in the last season. He came out of winning the Xfinity Championship in 22. Cocky young kid, ready to, to go for it, do anything. Then he came to the Cup Series. But he has really, really done well. So close to winning that clash two weeks ago. Yes. So close. And I think you got to be a little bit cocky to be like you have to be a little bit arrogant at this to be super successful. Did you just admit something? <laughs> I never said I wasn't wasn't confident. I was very Ty, confident. You didn't say confident. Ty Gibbs 21st. Cocky. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Second fastest Toyota. Hey, Austin Dillon was really fast. Teammate, keep an eye on Kyle Busch. Kyle would like to get off this list. Cup champions without a Daytona 500 win in this race six of them so close last year so this is his 20th Daytona 500 and that counts the year that he qualified for the 500 but crashed hard in the Saturday race went to the hospital didn't get to run uh, for the next several weeks in fact don't forget at lap 500 500 miles into this race last year that car was in the lead Green white checker didn't go the best. He's finished second in the 500. He's started fourth here four times. Working for Richard Childress. And you know this, Clint. Coming to the Daytona 500, you better have your stuff together in the engine shop, in the race shop, because he's like Rick Hendrick. When he comes down here, he expects to have a chance at the pole, and he wants to win the race. The zone Chevrolet for Kyle Busch times in six. That will knock Chase Briscoe out of the top ten and move Ryan Priest to the bubble. Chase Elliott, the Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet for Rick Hendrick. This will be his ninth Daytona 500. First two years here, he started on the pole. That incomplete season last year with the big goose egg in the win column. Not that many laps left. Still decent average finish, but not the season he would have wanted. You're not going to see that again, boys. Yeah, he I agree. Ready to go. Call it redemption car, whatever. I'm going to tell you, this nine car is back. And you know what I like? I, I love the way that he has talked. He seems comfortable, relaxed. He looks like he's in good shape. Um, you know, from everything that he's done, he seems happy. And I think that he just never got into that last year. He was frustrated and and just never got in a rhythm. But I, I think I think after he wins the first race, I think we should drive down to Georgia. Yes, go to the billiards room. What's it called? We're gonna go. The horn. I want to. I want to honk the horn. I think they let us ring that siren down there. Well, you can do that. I'll drink a beer. How about that? We'll do both. All right. Elliott is fifth. That makes five Chevys in the top ten and five Fords for Ross Chastain, Florida Melon Man, and the Bush Light Chevrolet for Trackhouse Racing. Five Daytona 500s for Chastain. A best start of 19th. The best finish of seventh. One of the best activation sponsors there is, hands down. Glad it landed at this driver with this camp. Um, it'll only make a guy like Ross Chastain more popular, which he needs to be. He does things on the racetrack nobody else can do, puts people on their feet in the stands. I like Ross Chastain and what he does, and I'm glad he has that partnership with well, inside of him. And he's got a fast car. and, and as you say, with with Bush Light on on the side of that car and everything that they've done with with me for the for the past several years, and they've been a part of NASCAR racing for a very long time, and and right now uh, they're on board a fast number one. What's hard to believe is last year he had only one top ten finish at either Daytona or Talladega, ninth in the 500 last year. Chastain is eighth, and Riley Herbst will not advance to the second round. Chris Buescher in the Fastenal Ford for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. 
had three wins last year. They all came in the last 15 races of the season, and they included the regular season finale here at Daytona. Chris Buescher is a hidden gem. I love the way he races. Uh, he's just, he's always there at the end of the races. He's good at figuring out his car when it's not good and, and, and can figure out how to communicate and tell his team what he needs. And that's, that's what it takes to be a great driver. You have to be able to talk to your team and tell them what you need and be able to not make those mistakes. And I think Chris Buescher does that. It's identical to the way a conversation or an interview goes with him. It just gets the job done, checks all the boxes, hey. but it's kind of quiet. Yes, and that's okay. And, you know, I think with Brad coming over and doing everything that he's done at RFK, it's really allowed Chris to, to shine and do the things that he did last year. We have chrome numbers shining on the racetrack. One of only two drivers to finish in the top five in both Daytona races last year. Bush your 14th fastest. And right now, the top 10 that move on includes six Chevys and four Fords. Larry, I like what you pointed out here. These Toyotas, they are definitely slow on the speed chart. Yeah, honestly, I, they're slower than I anticipated. I didn't think they would be a contender for the front row, but definitely slower than I anticipated. But always there when handling's on the line and, and you know, 15, 20 laps in and these runs, here they come. Look at the goose eggs in the playoff column for Martin Truex last year. Regular season champion, disappointing playoffs for the 43-year-old from Mayetta, New Jersey, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing and the Bass Pro Shops Toyota. Pole winner here for Chip Ganassi in 2009 and runner-up for Furniture Row Racing in 2016 in the 500-mile race. The only thing that concerns me about the, the lack of speed, Clint, is especially on Thursday night for the qualifying races when it's cool and dark and, and grip levels are up, is going to be that speed. Like, you're going to have to be able to... The, the Fords and the Chevrolets are not going to take a lot of speed out of their car. You're going to have to race this car, obviously. And I, you know, I think that the Fords know what to race for the yeah. most part uh, with, with what they've done in the past. So I know their body's different and, and could have some different handling characteristics, but they've been, they've been pretty stout. So the speed is going to matter. Mark Truex, 24th. Michael McDowell, winner of the Daytona 500 just a couple of years ago in the Love's RV Stops Ford. Started uh, sixth here two years ago. Got the victory three years ago. Big crash on the last lap that time. So did you did you pull into a Love's the other night to sleep uh, in your motorhome? Is well, that buddy? Where you, I always is stop at Love's. I okay. love, and this is why I called my first Daytona 500. Michael McDowell won the race. I was on my way home, pulled into Love's like I always do. Looked over there. Daytona 500 champion My, Michael McDowell all over it. I'm like, that is activation. That's the way it's supposed to be. Always a loves. But you didn't answer my question. And they gave, a, a, they gave me a card with a oh, so free gave coffee you something. or something. I got ah. you. What, nothing about it being Valentine's Day and there's hearts all over the car? I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that one off, Mike. <laughs> I don't know if the bouquet of roses well, for loves is going to cut it. McDowell just did. He just timed in sixth fastest. Knocked out Todd Gilliland. So he will be in the top 10 in round two. Good super speedway racer right there, Michael McDowell. All right, two drivers to go, two spots to be decided. Daniel Suarez from Monterey, Mexico, for Team Trackhouse, the Freeway Insurance Chevrolet. And Suarez is going to be in his seventh Daytona 500 on Sunday. Well, based upon his teammate with, with Ross Chastain, he should be, if the cars are prepared like we think they should be at a super speedway, should be right there, Absolutely. close to his teammate. Seven one-hundredths of a second separate Chastain from Harrison Burton, who holds the 10th spot. Well, it's quite a, a, quite a bit of speed off of two. I don't know if it bottomed out somewhere down there or what happened. Got tight, maybe, I don't know, but it did definitely lost a half a car length to Harrison Burton off of two. so cool to just listen to those motors hum, see Ooh. the drivers doing their things. 19th. That will lock Ross Chastain in, so now there's just one spot left to be decided. And it will be either Harrison Burton, who has completed his run, 
for the next driver on track, Bubba Wallace. Well, deja vu all over again. Last year, it was Harrison Burton versus Bubba Wallace for the final spot in the second round. Three inches, Clint said, was the difference. Here we are, Harrison Burton's 10th. Here's Bubba Wallace in the McDonald's Toyota. Best start here of sixth and best finish of second twice. Another guy I heard an interview today, uh, Kevin, you talked about confidence. He was calm, he was collected, he's very confident coming into the Daytona 500. Really good super speedway racer. You cannot count him out for this great American race. Well, he, he had a breakout year last year, and, and I love the fact that he's more confident in the things that he can do because he's here for a reason. Believe in the things that you've done to get to this particular point, uh, and he's, he's proven that by getting better every year. And a good hot rod, too. And it's over. Harrison Burton once again scores the 10th spot in the first round and will transfer with nine other drivers to run for the pole for the Daytona 500. Saturday night. Tomorrow, the greatest week in racing continues with the duel at Daytona, America's best battle to set the field for the Daytona 500, 7 Eastern on FS1. Josh Sims. Down here, William Byron, on to the second round of qualifying. Now, you've won the pole for the Daytona 500 before. What's it going to take for you to go out there and do it again? Honestly, I feel like our Exalta Chevy was was really fast there. It's really tight between the top, uh, you know, top eight, really. So it looks like there's room to improve for me. You know, I, I felt like out there, I felt like my line could be a little bit better, and I felt like I just wasn't super clean with my launch. So I think there's a little bit on my end that I could do better. and. I feel like if we put all those things together and hopefully pick up a little bit in the second round, hopefully we're on the front row. It'd be nice to sleep easy tonight and be able to go into tomorrow's duel and not have to worry so much about the result uh, for Sunday. So we'll see. Car looks beautiful, so always have great paint schemes with Exalta. So excited for the week here and ready to get the season going. William Byron looking to keep the front row streak going for Hendrick Motorsports, Jamie. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Jimmy Johnson must race his way into the Daytona 500 tomorrow night. Jimmy, what was going on during that run? It's so hard to tell. I know that last year in qualifying in this new package, the car turns a lot less RPM, and it was very difficult for me to know if it was a good lap or not. And I had that confusion again this year, but sadly, um, it wasn't fast enough to get us in. Um, we've worked really hard over the offseason, and you know, this isn't what we had hoped for coming down here. Um, Eric ran a respectable lap, so uh, I, I think it's in there. It's just, um, you know, just a lot of new elements coming together, and we'll work hard um, to race our way in tomorrow. It's not a position I wanted to be in, but it is what it is, and we'll do all that we can with this Toyota Camry. All right, we'll see you in the duels tomorrow night. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Well, let's look at who has advanced to the final round. There are six Camaros and four Mustangs to battle for the Daytona 500 front row next. Now, the open teams, those six teams, we know that Anthony Alfredo and David Reagan are locked in on time. If either one of them races into the 500 tomorrow night, Jimmy Johnson or B.J. McLeod can either race in on time or in the duel tomorrow night. However, J.J. Yaley and Kaz Grala have only one option to make the 500, and that's to race their way in tomorrow. Tomorrow on FS1, catch the Fox Sports original, I am Kevin Harvick. This documentary takes you through his legendary career on and off the track. Tomorrow, 10 p.m. Eastern, right after the duel at Daytona, only right here on FS1. Ten drivers will run for the Daytona 500 front row. Three with Hendrick Power Plant, three with ECR engines, and four with Roush Yates Ford engines. Who will win the poll? Access to opportunity isn't always equal. But... Joey Logano is getting ready to go. Six Chevrolets, four Fords. One will win the Daytona 500 poll. Well, we see. A great in-car shot of Joey Logano, and we see his dash right there. And we talk so much about these launches. This is my old dash right here. We're going board with Alex Bowman. 
and you hear the RPMs and the shifts and the shift, light, shift lights that are going through the gears right here with my dash. But we talked about Alex Bowman hitting that chip. Uh, I believe it was uh, his third gear, his third gear shift. But the driver's responsibility is to get as much and as close to the RPM that you need to shift at to get as much power and momentum going as, as he goes through the gears. So the driver does have some, have some responsibilities in, in everything that he does with his hands and the steering wheel and putting the car close to the line and getting through those gears and not spinning the tires too much. There's a lot of responsibility on the drivers. That uh, Mustang has an all new body for NASCAR for 2024. It's the Mustang Dark Horse. And uh, they hope for improved aerodynamics. Let's see how this sorts out for Harrison Burton, who has led laps in both of his Daytona 500 starts. Finished 26th here last year for the Wood Brothers. I like how Harrison came from the top of the racetrack and you try to run downhill down that trioval to get as much momentum with the car as possible. And right at the start finish line, you want those left side tires against the against the yellow line. We saw a lot of guys not do that in qualifying. They were kind of in the middle of the track and I think that's given up given up uh, distance on the racetrack. Like what you said about the new dark horse body. All right, we're, we're forward. We need one new body. We need to improve. Where do we need to improve? Whatever you do, do not mess up the super speedways. We're really fast there. We obviously got Phoenix down. We won the last two championships, but maybe on a mile and a half, give me a little bit of downforce, a little bit of drag. And it looks from the speeds like they like they still have good speeds. And and let's let's not forget about the engine under that hood. Roush Yates, Doug Yates, they love super speedway racing and put a ton of effort into it. Now Burton got up off the bottom, exiting turn number four. Couldn't hold it right at the yellow line. And he is at 49.90. Well, one of the things we're going to talk about is who picks up speed and who doesn't. Harrison did not pick up speed compared to um, what he ran in the first round, but it was it was almost identical. Yeah, it dropped a six one thousand. Yeah, but should have picked up. To your point, should have picked up. Should have Ross up. Chastain finished top ten in three of his five Daytona 500s. Ninth last year, best finish of seventh. He ran a 49.83 uh, in, in the first round. So anything that, that picks up is going to be doing the, a good job in the pits and, and getting your engine cooled and doing all the things that you needed to do from the cooling down process to get the car to go out and refire again. It should go faster with everything warmed up in the engine and transmission from the oil standpoint. I think the Ghost Tracker is proving that point too, Kevin. Look how smooth his uh, his ride is is noticeably smoother than most of the other cars that that have been running really fast. His head is not moving around a lot at all. Ross Chastain, 49.75. So that is a drop off of 18 one hundredths from his first round. Kyle Game. Busch. Game. I'm sorry, Game. Uh, Kyle Busch. 18 Daytona 500s for the best finish of second. So close last year. Got us a drag race here. EC ECR engines has three engines in the final 10. We talked about Richard Childress and everything that they do as far as effort with these cars coming down here and having three of the top 10 is, is uh, Pretty good. Yeah, you talk about Doug Yates and everybody at Roush Yates Horsepower. Don't you think that those ECR boards ain't capable of building some steam under the hood? Always a lot of emphasis. That car got loose right there off the floor. A lot of emphasis on uh, on their performance at this racetrack in particular. 49.72. That is a tenth of a second faster. Good that he up. ran around one. Two drivers will lock in their starting positions tonight. In Sunday's Daytona 500, everyone else will have to go through the dual races tomorrow night to learn where they will start in the Great American Race. Austin Sendrick, his team Penske Ford, Started fifth and led 21 laps in his Daytona 500 winning season two years ago. Going to see another good pickup here, Kevin. 
You see Austin left side tires right down on that yellow line. All right, Larry, we're talking about these cars picking up. Why are they picking up? Why are they going faster the second time out? I mean, you're, get, you're getting heat in all the drive line, in the transaxle, in the gearbox, in all four of the hubs, and that's less rolling resistance when you've got heat in those components. All that essentially was stone cold in round one. Cindric to the top, 49.66. He picks up 13 one-hundredths of a second. All right, top of the board. Right. Biggest pickup so far. Roger Penske's never won a Daytona 500 pole. We'll see if tonight's the night. Michael McDowell. Daytona 500 winner. Noted as a super speedway racer and road course racer. That's where he started his career. And he is right on top of Austin Cindric here for the fastest lap of the night. Now in this second round, they run the 10 cars run from slowest to fastest in round one. So you would expect the speeds to get higher and the times to come down as we go through these 10 drivers all the way to the end. Man, they put some of that trucker coffee in that loves, huh? Look at this. Car's got some speed. Well, and everybody learned from the first round. The tires have a little bit of heat, so that launch should be faster. The oils are, are better. The drivers are more comfortable with doing everything that they need to do to get the car a little bit closer to the yellow line in the corners. And McDowell is fastest, 49, 53. 53, brother, top of the board, hope it holds. Wow, that's a 10th and a half yeah. pickup. No, that's a quarter of a Shot second. Shot fired is what that is, wow. boys. Larry, that's fast. Yeah. My math is bad, Mike. <laughs> they keep getting faster. Chase Elliott, he ran a 78, a 49-78, which right now would be just good enough for fifth. So as we go through these last five, everybody's got to get quicker. Well, and we're officially rooting for Chase Elliott, are we not? The uh, Dawsonville pool room invited us to come on down if, when Chase wins. So I guess we're uh, we're tied into doing that. It was awesome. I loved it. They answered us. I looked down on a break and we got invited. <laughs> I got informed that it wasn't a horn, which I already knew. But I, Clint, it, I thought it was just kind of Clint funny here's free beer and he's in. Yeah, I'm going for the beer. But they said something about a jar. <laughs> already the fastest lap is faster than anybody went in round one. Man, this McDowell's car was extremely fast. You saw right there on the ticker. Elliott third, 49.67. Now he does pick up a tenth from round one, but not good lap for the front row. Yeah, good lap for the nine car, but not good enough. Here's his teammate, William Byron, for Hendrick Motorsports. And we heard William Byron talk about how he thought he could do his launch a little bit better and do a few things on his end a little bit better. Right, right there with Michael McDowell. Larry? Yeah, these drivers, these teams, they have access to the same data that I'm looking at. And when I look at the fastest four from round one, which was Joy Logano, who was fastest, Kyle Larson, who was second, and William Byron's fourth, the one thing that was different for Logano versus Byron and Larson, Logano got to high gear quicker. Yeah, and that high gear shift is is going to come anywhere but probably between at least for the Ford 78 to, to 8200 by the time you shift to fourth gear. Well, Michael McDowell has started 466 career NASCAR Cup races. Never from the pole. Wow. Never say never. Maybe tonight. There's Michael. 4953. Fastest so far now with three cars to go. Byron 49, 676. He was a thousandth of a second slower than Chase Elliott, his teammate. Austin Dillon, a former pole sitter for the 500. 500 winner as well. Now in the first round, he was three one hundredths quicker than Byron, four quicker than Elliott. One thing I've been noticing, Larry, when they get in the corner, that's it, right there, you see it. He got into one and two, and McDowell pulls away from them more so in the corner than anywhere. Same thing was w over uh, Byron the last lap. That tells me they've got that car trimmed out. It's not losing as much RPM in the corners, which means it's less down And probably not bottoming out like we saw Bowman's car do earlier, Kevin. 
Well, there's just so much that goes into it. We look at qualifying and, we, and everybody says, oh, it just looks like one car going around, around the racetrack. There are so many things that can go wrong. And you see that car get loose again, just like Kyle Busch's car did off of turn four. Dillon, fifth, and that will be a disappointment. 49-70 uh, for Austin Dillon. I know they hoped for more. They picked up half a tenth. Kyle Larson, another former pole sitter for the 500. In round one, he was nine one hundredths behind Joey Logano. See how much of that he can make up here and see if he can get Rick Hendrick another Daytona 500 pole. Looky here. Green light, bottom right of your screen. Now this Changes is where to they're red. starting to fall, right there in the corner, just like I just said. Can he get it back on the straightaway? Hendrick's last hope. Eight out of the last nine out of this Hendrick camp. Wow, that's close, Kevin. Yeah, it's just that, that <laughs> one section there going into turn one that you're talking about, Clint, that they gain a little bit. But here comes the five a little bit off of off of turn four. Lost a little there. Less than a hundredth of a second. So close. And to the line. Whoa, I see green. Second for Larson. 49 14 one thousandths of a second will put McDowell on the front row it'll be at all McDowell it'll be McDowell and Larson right now with Joey Logano to go now Logano nine one hundredths quicker in round one both Michael McDowell and Logano's car owner Roger Penske looking for their first Daytona 500 pole. Uh-oh. Man, look at that thing. Heard it just barely touch the ground right there. Didn't slow it down, though. Not a green down here. Starting to pull away a little bit. He's coming back, he says. Here comes Logano to settle the front row for Sunday's Daytona 500. He's going to do it. It's an all Ford front row. Joey Logano and Michael McDowell. Yes. 49, 4, 6, 5. Wow. 18 wow. one hundredths of a second was the pickup for Logano. Round oh, one to round two. 49, 46, Larry. Good job, guys. That's speed right there. That is ripping. What yeah, I love is. First one of those for us. Thank you. Nice job. Nice job. 29th career pole for Logano. His last one came almost a year ago. It was Atlanta last March that he sat on the pole for a cup race? I love the emotion. I, it really shows you how much goes into this Daytona 500 pole. There is your Daytona 500 front row. We'll speak to them right after this word. Fall at Daytona was the Rolex 24 hours won by Team Penske for Porsche. And here, the Daytona 500 pole is won by Joey Logano for Team Penske. Here's Jamie. And Joey Logano following his team guys in the car into victory lane. Joey, you've done a lot in your career, but you've never won the pole for the Daytona 500. What does this mean to you, to your crew chief, Paul Wolf, and this organization with this new model, by the way? Yeah, this is all about the team. Uh, I, honestly, and then I, I'd like to take credit, but I can't today. Uh, the guys have done such an amazing job working on these cars, and the super speedway qualifying is is. 100% the car. There's only so much a driver can do. Um, so I'm really proud of them. It's that's a big win for our, our team, for everyone at Team Penske, uh, Ford with a new dark horse Mustang, being able to come down here and, and uh, put it on the pin, and uh, finally someone else wins the pole. <laughs> that, that, that part feels good. So I've never even been close to a super speedway pole before. So uh, it's my first pole on a speedway. Couldn't be at a cooler event, obviously, at Daytona 500. So um, proud of the team. Can't thank uh, everybody enough. Um, Shell, Pennzoil, Hunt Brothers Pizza, AAA, everybody that uh, supports uh, this number 22 car. Um, huge deal for, for Team Penske. All right, Joey Logano, your pole sitter for the Daytona 500. 
How about that? And what a roll Team Penske is on. Here is the starting lineup for Duel 1 with Logano and Kyle Larson facing off for the front row. Now, most of these cars are locked in, including Anthony Alfredo locked in uh, there on speed. Three of the four Hendrick cars and that one. That's going to be a big race for them. And there are drivers that have to race in. Jimmy Johnson and J.J. Yaley in race number one will be battling for a spot. I'm a little concerned about those Toyotas, Clint. They are too, but they'll handle. You watch, they're gonna handle and drive right up through them. These duels are so much fun to watch. The pressure that's on, a lot of learning, no practice yet. These guys gotta get in these duels and see what they have, learn their race cars. Here's race number two, Michael McDowell, the outside pole sitter with Austin Sendrick will lead them to green in race two tomorrow night. And in this one, we'll have uh, BJ McLeod and Kaz Grala trying to race in and join David Reagan as the open cars in the 500 field. Look at Denny Hamlin way back in 18th there. So tomorrow on FS1, truck series practice at five, race day at six, and the Blue Brigade Vacations duel at Daytona at seven. Sunday on FS1, NASCAR race day, 11 a.m. Race day continues on Fox at one, followed by the Daytona 500 on Fox at 2.30 p.m. Congratulations to Daytona 500 winner Joey Logano and outside pole sitter Michael McDowell. Now to Fox College Hoops. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.